This week on Sport Fishing, we'll be heading out of San Diego out of H&M Landing. We'll be fishing aboard the Chief with our buddy Chris Randall. We'll be going offshore looking for bluefin, tuna, yellowtail, you never know what to expect. So stay tuned for this week's exciting episode of Sport Fishing. I'm Dan Hernandez and I live to fish. That's a nice vermilion right there. Yeah, this is what fishing's like. I have been fishing along the Pacific coast my entire life. Let me bring you in in the action and share with you some great fishing tips along the way. <laughs> we're about 60 miles from San Diego, and uh, we're on a one-day trip mid-July, and we're fishing the tuna beds. This is kind of a really different, unique thing that you can only do here. It started about four or five years ago, and uh, probably can get a look at it here in just a sec. Big round beds, they're actually holding tuna that they caught with saners, and it attracts schools as they feed these fish. Really unique opportunity, so stay tuned. Let's see if we can get some more. Good job. Go on the board. Thank you, sir. Quality bluefin here. We'll have a fly line sardine, fishing, fishing the tuna pans. All right, let's get some more. But today we're aboard the Chief, fishing with Chris Randall again, old friend of ours. He used to run the Indian, now he's on this boat. And we're out fishing tuna by the pins. We got two fish going. That's what we'll be doing today. Looking for yellowfin tuna, bluefin tuna, maybe even a yellowtail or two. Doing good. Straight out, nice. Straight off off the boat. Yeah. Each time. Pull it on that fish. Keep that rod bent. Hold it, hold it. Keep coming up slowly. Hold it. Hold it. Hold it. Hold it. See how we got a nice bend of the rod here? You gotta get this fish's head up. Ooh, okay. He's pooping out. <laughs> Come on, you're pooping out. I got you on camera. Oh. 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 oh! That's fishing. Well, we just landed another nice 30, 35 pound uh, bluefin here on 30 pound test with a 40 pound leader. If you do it right, take your time, you come out ahead. Yeah. Was that fun? Heck yeah. I'm ready to go out there and do it again. All right. Beautiful fish. There are several different species of bluefin tuna, and they can be found all over the world. The Pacific bluefin tuna is quite different than that on the East Coast, and can be found widely in the Northern Pacific and in local waters here in Southern California and Mexico. Pacific bluefin tuna can reach speeds of 60 miles an hour and grow up to 700 pounds. As a predator, they eat a variety of smaller fish, including macro sardines and anchovies. <laughs>
This week in the Tackle Box, I'm going to talk to you a little bit about what we're doing today. We're fishing offshore looking for tuna using live bait, live sardines. And the most important part about fishing a live sardine is to pick a good lively bait. It's called live bait fishing for a reason and I can't tell you how many times I watch anglers just go to the bait tank, grab anything they can, usually something that looks like it's dead, and pin it on and then they get disappointed they can't catch fish. The guys that are really successful, the anglers that are successful, spend a little bit of time at the bait tank. They're looking at the bait wells, they're looking at all the baits swimming around there. They want to get one that's so hard to catch, they have to use both hands, it's swimming really hard in there. The ones that are swimming the best in the bait well are the ones that are going to swim the best out on the water, running away from the tuna. They're going to look attractive to the tuna, they're going to come down, chase them down and eat them. Now once you pick the good live bait, it's hook selection. If you're new to the sport, you're not quite sure when to set the hook, use the circle hook. If you're really familiar with it and you like to drive that hook in the fish, then use a J hook. Some days I, you know, I use one and then I go the other. If I'm having trouble setting the hook, I'll go to a circle hook. But as a rule, I usually use a J hook. And just to let you know what they look like, this is the two differences. The difference is when a fish runs with a circle hook, all you do is put the rod in gear, point it to the fish, and it hooks itself. With the J hook, you're gonna let it run to a count of three or four, put the reel in gear, let all that slack line come out of your rod, out of your line, and then drive that hook into the fish. You gotta pull that hook out of the bait and right into the fish, so you gotta pull really hard. At that point, you have the fish, and all it is is a matter of winding it in. I know when all the action's going off and you're really excited, you wanna hurry up and get to rail and throw out your bait, the big key is to spend a little time at the bait tank. You just want to stay there at the bait tank and find a good lively bait. You get a good quality bait, you're going to have a more successful day. It isn't always about how much time you spend at the rail as it is about how much time you invest at the bait tank to get a good lively bait. And if you can't find a good lively bait, if all the baits in there have red noses and missing scales, ask the deckhand to please get you some more bait. They'll dig down there, they'll get you a bait, put it in the bait well, it'll be great. You know, deckhands and the skippers, they all want you to have a successful trip. So just ask for help and they'll be glad to help you. Well, let's get back on the water and show you more exciting action right here on Sport Fishing. Nice and easy, hold it, hold it. You can do it, ready? When I tell you to, we're gonna drop the line. Ready, one, wait, wait, wait for the swell. Wait, wait, one, two, three, wind. Drop the rod, there you go, when you wind, drop the rod. Okay, we're gonna hold it. Ready, one, two, three, wind. Good job, good job. Keep it going, keep it going. Ready, wind. There you go, Trooper. Yeah, she's getting it. We are so close. Big one. Hold it, wait, 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 wait. Could be jackpot. Don't look. Don't look. Don't look. Why down now? We are right here. Pull up, pull up, pull up, pull up, pull up, pull up, pull up. Pull up. This is what fish is about. Yeah. We do a lot of kids' yeah. sponsored stuff. This young lady just did an absolutely fantastic job of landing this monster yeah. that probably weighs as much as she does. Maybe even more. Hi, hi, right, girl. Good job. This Randall. is Miranda. She's out here fishing with her dad. Hi. Her dad's been out with us. They've both been out with us before. Yeah. But is this your first tuna, Miranda? Yes. Pretty? Yeah, it is. Beautiful bluefin tuna. Awesome. 
All right, well, we're going to take a little break from the action and we're going to go to the galley and show you how to cook up one of these delicious foods. Good job, honey. Stay tuned, we'll be right back. Good job. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. Nice job, Cal. Oh my God, that was awesome. This week in the galley, we're back at Eat Street, Anaheim, California. Standing next to me is Kate, and she owns this business here. Professional chef, and she's been kind enough to help us out with the cooking segment today. And what do you have in store, Kate? This is a cold kind of, you think you know how to make tuna salad, but not so much. We're actually doing real tuna with white beans, arugula, red tomatoes, a little bit of vinegar, olive oil. Good, it's, it's it's like a pumped up tuna salad. So oh, that's good. So here's our tuna. How do we get started? Okay, you're gonna cut this guy into inches. So go yeah. just like that. You're gonna go here, 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 make it in strips. Okay. And then you're gonna go the other way so everything's roughly one inch. So I got all this fish. Now what okay. are we gonna do with it? So this? all that's coming over here. And all of it. All of it? Yeah. Okay. Stir it around. You want everything to be cooked all the way through. Just gonna add a little bit of vinegar. A little bit, yeah. We actually have to cool it down. Take the chilled bluefin tuna. You're gonna put it in here, just like this, perfect style. Then you're gonna take your white beans. So one can, usually if you go to the store, one, one can is 15 ounces. Go for it. Just throw it all in there? Yeah, throw it in there. Okay. Three tablespoons capers. Do two tablespoons red wine vinegar. So does the red wine vinegar just add a different flavor? Yeah, yes it does. Okay, so I got the olive oil in there. I'm stirring this up. So what you're gonna do is take these guys, go right in half, and they're split in the middle. And so you're gonna go one, two, three, ten. Stir it up. Okay, so I'm gonna add salt. You guys always add it way up here. I don't know why. This is to make it more balanced. Okay, a little bit of pepper. Stir it like crazy. into your bed of arugula. This looks delicious. So this is just a tuna salad? Okay, so let's pretend it's tuna salad with mayonnaise, but it's actually way better. It's the tuna that you caught mm -hmm. with white beans, tomatoes, arugula, a little bit of rockets. Nice Olive salad. oil, salt, pepper, you're good to go. What do you think? This is delicious. Yeah? Really delicious, super healthy. This is way better than having it wrapped in no, bread, all kinds of mayonnaise. I love it. This is good. Love. Bluefin tuna, real simple dish to do. Yeah. But well, thank you, You can you, do Kate. it at home. Oh, you're welcome. Mary, this is Kate from Eat Street. She's in Anaheim, California. Nice enough to help us out today. Let's get back on the water show you more exciting action right here on Sport Fishing. This was good. Skipper just made a move. It's late morning now. So Skipper just said we see another cow patty. What we're doing right now is we're trolling lines. We're looking around to find more cow patties. We just found another one. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna bring in all the trolling rods right now, slide up to a cow patty and see if we can get us some yellowtail. Yeah. 
Fresh one. Turn up the camera. Coming down. Yeah, baby. We just came up on this cow patty and I threw a magic middle jig and I got bit instantly. You can see color already, it's a yellow tail. All right, yeah. There we go, nice gap. Here's the yellow I just caught and see I used a magic metal jig, just winding it right over that cow patty. Fish came up and ate it, beautiful fish. Not the biggest fish today, we got those nice tuna already. But it's pretty good. We got five, six fish going. Chris is going to gaff another one. Let's see what they're up to. There he goes. Well, we just got a nice kelp out of here. We got 67 fish going. A little there bit of pandemonium. We've lost a couple. And we, we're getting a couple. Oh, too deep. And I missed the gap. Woo! But, uh, this is a uh, open water school size yellowtail. Everybody's having fun. Good weather, good fishing. Come on up, guys. Just let me get the fish. Here we go. There we go. There we go. There you go. Another and it's all happy about. camper fishing on the Jeep. Come on up on that fish. Come on, hold them up, you can do it. Boys, you yeah, can see baby. on these kelp, there's medium school size fish, and then every now and then you get a nice big yellow tail like this. Good job. Are you happy? Uh, yeah, <laughs> loving it. All right, good job. Do you know what California yellowtail are related to? Is it jacks, tuna, or croakers? That's right. California Yellowtail are related to jacks. Yellowtail before? No. No, it's going to be his first yellowtail. Look, give a smile for the camera. <laughs> My first yellowtail. Only when he gets on the boat, though. There you go. Doing just right. Pull up, wind down. Come on now, dude. Get a second gap here. Wind down. Are you tired? Yeah. Turn around, look at the camera here. I'm very tired. Here, grab your rod. <laughs> Here's yeah. this nice fish. Guys, this young man worked very, very hard. You see, he's wearing one of Dan's appropriate shirts. He didn't give up, he stayed with it, true and true. And uh, I know you're tired and sweating, and you look like it, but you know what? Here's your reward a beautiful bluefin tuna. Nice job. All right. He said he wanted to go sand bass fishing. 
Good job, John. Hey, Chris, we've been on a lot of trips together, oh, and we've, yeah. we've seen fish much bigger, but I've never seen anybody work so hard yeah. to you, get a fish. You had your heart into it, that's for sure, and I'm nice proud job. of you, man. Nice job, Tom. Fantastic. Yeah. He's pretty big. Go ahead, try it. I, well, I, we're going to take a little break from the action here aboard the Chief with Captain Chris Randall and Connor here with this beautiful tuna, and when <laughs> we return, I'll be giving you this week's tip of the week. Nice job, Tom. Good job. happen today. We got a big fight today here aboard the Chief. What means it wasn't wide open, but it was good fishing. You had to work at it, and the guys that changed their bait often were the ones that caught fish. That's this week's tip. You get in a pick bite, you want to change your bait every two to three minutes, you have a much better chance of catching fish. The guys that did that today caught the fish today. They are very successful. I caught my fish on a jig. I was the only person who used a jig today that caught a fish, and everybody else got their baits on live baits. That's this week's tip. Change those baits often. On a pick bite, you'll catch a lot more fish. Well, I want to thank the whole crew aboard the Chief, Captain Chris Randall. I fished with him since he was a deckhand. I am a producer back when he was like 18, 19 years old. We fished with him on the Indian a lot. Now he's on this boat. He's doing a great job. You see today we had lots of fish today. Well, I'm Dan Hernandez, hoping you enjoyed this week's episode of Sport Fishing. And I hope you join us again next week as we go looking for more of the best Fort Christian.